lesson 11.6. We've learned about the Francophones in previous chapters. Today, we're going to take a look at the Francophone contribution to Western Canada. So stick around and let's learn something. It's true, the Francophones did contribute to the overall development of Western Canada. This is 11.6 and we are talking about Francophones in the West. We know so far that the Francophones lived in Western Canada for generations. They were actually the, non, the first non-Aboriginal people out in the West and they came over because of the fur trade and they started making their way out there in about the 1730s. And make no mistake, the Francophones left their mark. The Canadien and Métis, you see it everywhere you go here on the prairies. They named rivers, they named lakes, they named regions, uh, towns developed into cities. We have Batoche, Morinville, St. Paul, Beaumont, Lac St. Anne, St. Albert, St. Boniface, Albertville. These are all... Um, names from Francophone communities, or of Francophone communities, I should say, and they definitely left their mark. They brought over the seigneurial system out west. You can still see remnants of the seigneurial system sometimes. If you're flying overhead, you might see the odd uh, long strip of farmland as opposed to the uh, sections and the, um, the the square plots that the government of Canada made when they came out west. The missionaries, they came out as well. So we know that the Grey Nuns, for example, they started schools and hospitals. And the Francophones, they developed the early businesses and they helped to create jobs, which eventually helped the Western economy of Canada. And... The Canadian, the English Canadians as well, they were moving out west from 1890 to 1914. And these are called internal migrants. So these are people already living in Canada, moving their way in and about Canada. And the Canadian at the time, they believed that Manitoba would be bilingual. So they were definitely attracted out west to Manitoba because of that promise. There was an educational system that was modeled after the Quebec system, so they had Catholic schools. And if you moved out to Manitoba, you had the right to speak both languages. And then many Canadians kind of continued the move out west, and they made it all the way even to Edmonton. And in 1880, 60% of the population in Edmonton was French-speaking. You can see here on the image, I have a population graph of the city of Edmonton from 1878 to 2019. And you can see that the population of Edmonton has grown tremendously over those years. Over time, however, um, our Canadiens out here in Western Canada, they were outnumbered by the Anglophones. And the Anglophones knew that this was going to be happening and they wanted to boost their population. The internal migration that was happening within Canada was not enough to keep the Francophone community alive and strong. And the Catholic Church then steps in. And they begin attracting more French Catholics to come out west. And between 1891 and 1899, we have just under 2,500 French Catholics coming out west. And between 1860 and 1900, half a million Canadiens moved from Quebec to New England, so to the United States, not out west. Now, that's a third of the Quebec population. They went down to factory jobs. And the Francophones that were out west, they tried their best to lure these Canadiens from New England back to Canada. Some were successful and some weren't, but they didn't get the huge numbers that they had hoped were going to come out. So the Francophones started looking to Belgium and France. And these immigrants from Belgium and France, they were then making their way over to Western Canada. La Ranch St. Anne, sorry for my accent, but north of Calgary was uh, kind of settled and developed there. Um, and by 1886, we've got about 1,600 Francophones here on the prairies, half of which were Métis. 
And that number from, from trying to get people from Belgium and France, by 1821, the population of Francophones uh, shot up to 137,000. Seems like a lot. That seems like a, a really big number, but the prairies are a vast land. We've got Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. So that 137,000 actually only made up about 7% of the prairie population. All right, I want you to head over to your notebook and, put, and complete the questions for this part of the chapter.